welcome to my channel. I'm a second year med student and I enjoy making videos about anything related to being a med student and my other hobbies as well. Our video for today is about how I survived in my second year of online classes in medicine school. Yes, I know sobrang nakapagod yung online classes. Same. Kaya, I will guide you through how it's like, what the subjects are, and how I dealt with it. And at na rin natin yung mga personal suggestions ko along with some tips. A disclaimer, most of my advice is based from my personal experience. And please understand if there will be information that I can't disclose in this video such as issues and academic materials. But I will try my best to give you the important things to know that will be helpful as you embark on your second year of uh, by the way, I made an FB group for us to interact with each other. I hope it will become a good community for us wherein we will help each other academically. Pinangalanan ko siyang Love and Docs. O, diba? So, the link will be posted down below. Go check it out if you want to join. So, yes, if you're interested about the second year life, then let's I will try to break down all of the necessary information that you need to know about second year medicine. So, subjects, the online setup, techniques, and how I study the subject, how I dealt studying at home, and my advice. So, ito, I got this info on the website of UERM, and I think same-same lang din sa mga second-year med subjects. So, basically, there are 12 subjects, 4 annual subjects, which are pathology, pharmacology, medicine 1, and psychiatry. Then, for the semestral subjects, in the first semester, these subjects are microbiology, bioethics, and research methods 2. Then, for the second semester, will be parasitology, pediatrics, Neurology, Surgery, and Research Projects 1. Natapos na lang ako na second year. Di ko pa rin sure kung anong major subjects namin. But based on the units, these are Pathology, Pharmacology, Medicine, and Microbiology. So most of the subjects have preceptorial classes or commonly called laboratory classes wherein we are divided into breakout rooms, Zoom, and an assigned doctor will guide us throughout every session. Usually, it's done once or twice a week depending on your preceptor or your subject. So, if the first year, the focus is on the basics, the normal functions and systems in the body, here in second year med, we will progress into dealing with the abnormalities of the body. And this will be, baka masya kayo ha sa term, so this will be the etiopathogenesis or yung cause and development of a disease. Big bird, diba? But we get to na yun. Now, let's talk about how we conduct the online setup. So, we have both synchronous and asynchronous classes. Synchronous means having a live lecture while in a Zoom meeting. As for the asynchronous classes, it means that we study uploaded video lectures given through Canvas on our own time. Most of our classes in second year are usually synchronous and I think only two subjects were usually asynchronous like psych and pathology. Nakadepende yan siya. When it comes to the preceptorial classes naman, the, the department will instruct us to buy the medical equipment needed for the session. So if you haven't checked out my video about medical equipment, I discussed about how to use it and the links on where to buy it. So, yan, go check it out. So, when it comes to the return demonstration videos, we also did it and it is commonly called the OSCE, OSCE, or Objective Structured Clinical Examination. We are given a time limit to conduct the assigned clinical procedure and do it according to the case given. Tapos, may OSEP din kami sa pharmacology. It is conducted using a one-on-one -on -one approach with an assigned doctor. So, we were given five cases to study and then on the day of the OSEP, you will pick one case and you will answer it. In answering it, you will give the therapeutic objectives, non-pharmacological treatment, anong drug, its dosage, and etc. There will also be group video projects, a digital portfolio, and many more. So, Yes, di lang tayo nag sa med. And ang pag-aartista ay kinakarir din dito. So, be ready for it. If you're wondering how we did it, go check out my previous video. I dumped all of my remaining days in second year para may idea din kayo. So, ayun, I got out barely alive at that time and nakakapagod, to be honest, ang online classes. I think nakadepende yan sa school. Pero sa amin, there will be six long exams, three each semester, and then pre-pandemic kasi, each long exam exams have an equal distribution of percentages, I think. But last second year, sa time ko, sa first sem, 
na loka sa distribution kasi 5 to 10% lang yung LE1 and LE2. Kasi yung LE2, aaralin din yung LE1. Tapos 30% yung LE3 namin na aaralin din yung LE1 and LE2. Then in the second semester, na-change ulit yung percentages, especially nung sa final exams namin, na 50% ng grade namin. Yes. So, some of the coverage, my LE4 to LE6 lang. And meron din from the beginning. Like, pharma, medicine, and psych. So, yeah. It was a tough year for all of us kasi we had to juggle everything. From dealing with the backlog, projects, may pa-videos pa, OSCE, and yung heavy coverage. So now we go on with the tips on how I study the second year subjects. I will just prioritize the important ones and magbibigay lang ako ng Anting idea sa minors. The most difficult subjects for me were pharmacology and medicine. So, for pharmacology, I salute all the pharmacists out there kasi na memorize nila lahat yung mga drugs. Grabe, I had a hard time dealing with pharma talaga. So, as an average student, ito yung tip ko. You should know the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of each drug first. And then, once you understand already how the drug works and its mechanism, in the body, ilista mo muna yung drug groups that you are going to study para may overview ka na, ah, ito yung limang drug groups aaralin ko. And then, choose one drug for each drug group. So, for example, drugs for diabetes. Insulin is the most popular one, di ba? But, we also have non-insulin medications like the biguanides wherein we have the metformin. And may maraming drug groups pa yan, like this. So just remember muna one drug for every drug group and then tabulate the different drug groups. Then include kung anong distinguishing characteristic niya. Like yung drug ba yun, ang drug of choice, first line of drug ba siya, for what type of disease or illness. Tapos include mo na yung mode of action, adverse effects. Yan yung usually essential in studying pharma. The reference book will be Katsu. For the subject medicine, reference book will be Harrison's and sa lab yung Bates. So, the subject medicine, it was a struggle for me since the questions in the exam were very challenging. In my part, I was wrong for underestimating this one kasi akala ko minor subject siya. <laughs> Ito kasi yung mag-generalize sa lahat ng naaral mo in the means of physical diagnosis. So, what I did is bumawi ako and I made time for this one na aralin talaga siya by understanding it. For me, di siya kaya ng one bid lang since you have to have an overview on what the topic is all about. Kung may marami lang talaga akong time, it's very interesting to study it kasi it's how you approach the patient when he or she has a certain disease or condition. So, yan yung medicine subject. Sa subject din na ito, pagdating sa precept classes, pinapagawa din kami ng demonstration video like this. Ipass namin sa precept namin and he or she will give critical comments on how we should improve the examination that we demonstrate in our video. So next is pathology. In my part, akala ko talaga din na madali lang siya kasi I graduated medtech and may pathology kami. But then, pathology in medicine is indeed an upgrade to what I had studied before. Kasi pathology is the root as to why we are able to know the cause, nature, origin, and the development of a disease. In pathology, what I do is learn the terms first. And if you are familiar with the medical terms by its prefix or suffix sa name pa lang ng disease, magets mo na siya kung ano yon. For example, pag may word na hypertrophy, pag may marinig mo na yan, matik, lumalaki yung organ or part. In pathology, it's more of understanding the pattern of a disease, its pathogenesis, and etc. Like kung bakit ba umiitim or naging necrotic yung isang part ng katawan natin when given a certain situation. Basta magigets mo na yun and learn to understand what's going on so that you will be able to incorporate that basic knowledge and there will always be clues when you're given a case in the exam. Then we go to the micropara. Yes, advantage ng mga medtics ito, but in my opinion, you still need to refresh your knowledge about it and huwag tayo magpakampante kasi it's also not easy. For the non-medtech degree holders, here's how I study it. One thing that helped me a lot was to write down the name of the organism and draw. Kahit di ka marunong, kahit circle lang yan, something shape. In this way kasi, you can familiarize yourself with the name of the organism and how it would look like. Kasi sa practicals, wrong spelling wrong and mas mabuting na familiarize mo yung itsura ng organism. In microbiology, 
you should make a concept map like this. No, kung gram positive or gram negative siya, what test will be used to come up with that organism, location, virulence factor, and the disease it manifests, along with other clinical features that makes a certain organism unique from others. Same also sa parasitology, but ang maganda sa para is my life cycle siya, given na siya. So do memorize the life cycle from CDC and you will survive the parasitology subject. Reference na para is Belisario and microbiology is the medical microbiology. Tapos in Pedia, remember nyo lagi ang developmental milestones and ginagawa ko nun is to relate it and make a story depende sa'yo. Pwedeng mnemonics, chika, or a song if you want. If you're wondering, there will also be return demo videos sa Pedia and may mga worksheets sila. Ang ginagamit ko sa videos, ang patient ko is teddy bears sa infant, tapos mga cousins ko as a child. So, sa pedia, Nelson will be the main reference. Tapos sa surgery, it is both memorization and understanding. Same energy sila ni medicine na kailangan talaga din na araling mabuti. Reference will be Schwartz. Then, in the last days of the SEM, there was a case presentation wherein we were given a case for neurolocalization. So, it is called neuro CPC. Sa bioethics naman, ang masasabi ko lang is what would Jesus do? <laughs> Just understand the materials given such as chances. So, kung mag-aral ka niyan, goods ka na. Tapos sa research, I suggest do a survey na feasible sa online setup because I don't think matatapos tong pandemic agad. So, just be safe. Follow nyo na lang yung advice ko na yan. Okay, now let's talk about how I deal with studying at home. I'm not really used to studying here at home since I've been away no college days ko pa. And it was really hard for me to adjust. And I don't want to be insensitive saying na you should have a separate room for studying because some don't have the luxury to have one. But one thing that helped me have a peaceful life studying at home is I immediately had a talk with my parents about my schedule para malaman din nila kung gano'n ako kabisi and adjust din nila and what time ako pwede utusan. Okay, anyway, what I do is I try to listen to live lectures kahit short yung attention span ko in the morning and afternoon tapos sleep after class and my study time will start at around 7 to 8 p.m. tapos late na yung 10 p.m. Then I sleep at 2 to 3 a.m. Actually, pabago-bago yan. Usually, diretso ako from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. tapos matutulog na tapos gising na lang ng 6 a.m. So yes, sabog yung study schedule ko. <laughs> but ganyan yung trend usually. I use the app named Forest for the Pomodoro Technique kasi na adik talaga ako sa paggamit ng cellphone ko. So I have to be away from my gadget. So nga, I have a short attention span and I tend to face out. Then try ko talagang ayusin siya. I opted to follow this kind of schedule kasi ang daming ganap sa bahay kada umaga and I honestly work well at night. I know most of us can read, diba? So if my exam ako, I tell everyone in the house na paulit-ulit talaga yan na may exam ako, may exam ako para hindi talaga nila makalimutan. I also have study buddies via Zoom with my classmates. And what helped me a lot in retention is I teach myself. For example, I discuss the topic to myself rather than only highlighting reading materials, which is for me passive siya. My times then na nanonoo din ako ng ibang video lectures sa YouTube para mas maintindihan ko pa yung lesson. And madalas talaga kung may time, inulit ko yung basa. Pero usually two readings lang talaga ako, kasi yung time ko limited lang talaga yon. And inulit ko talaga yung pagbasa and gumagawa ako ng mga summary sa good notes na app. If you're interested, do check out my video on how I study using my iPad. For me, nag-switch na ako ng digital studying kasi maganda kasi yon pagdating ng long exams, nababalikan ko na lang siya. If may mga terms ako na medyo may ID ako, tinatype down ko na lang doon sa search area and makita na din, nagre-reflect na din yon sa mga transes kung anong topic yon. Basta guys, tips and advice ko lang to, whatever works for you naman, hindi nyo na kailangan pang baguhin. Alright? I think that's all the things you need to know and I hope this study tips will help you have a good start in your second year medicine journey. So, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. Thank you so much subscribers and road to 3K na to.
<laughs> Thank you so much. Salamat kaayo. You guys are always there to support me throughout this journey. And with that, it will always be an honor to help and guide you. So, thank you very much. This ends my video. So, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the notification down below to keep you guys updated on my next video. And also, I made the FB group. Join kayo non. Let's help each other nurture that page. So, hope to see you guys soon in my next video. Laban mga dog. Stay safe. Bye!